platform works, it, it's really the system, the, the added benefits here are providing exclusive content. It lets us create what we call publication channels in the new version 3.2 that we have here at IBC. And so you can create very rapidly dynamic content through the platform, which shows up on consumer devices. You can couple that to sponsorship tiers or, or different uh, advertising models as to how those custom <coughs> video on demand, small bite-sized consumable assets can be delivered to an ecosystem. And at EVS, we have specifically the CCAST applied partners that we show at our booth of showing real world practical examples on how that content can show up into those consumer devices in really new innovative ways, creating these new monetizable kind of content streams. Thank you, James. And it was a good example of the, the way we implement this technology. So this was actually on May 30th at, for the final of the, uh, the FA Cup in UK, in Wembley, where actually EVS based on the Fancast solution, which includes XT3, IP Director, and our cloud-based uh, multi, uh, multimedia distribution platform, Ccast, we enabled the spectators into the stadium to access uh, multi-angle uh, content uh, plus exclusive content straight to their connected device. So in this case, it's an iPad, but uh, most of the people were using their smartphone to do that through not the Wi-Fi, but in this case with the 4G. So we were actually collaborating in this case with EE, uh, 4G network, uh, and Intellico was the specialist uh, of the, uh, the app design. So we're presenting this technology at EVS Boo, so with these partners, uh, to, uh, so if you want to have a chance to uh, discover the way we were, we were implementing this technology, so you can come over and see it. Another example of how we implement this kind of technology to, uh, uh, to, to all the broadcasters, so we have a long-lasting collaboration with IBC TV, where we're providing, when we have all the backbone of their production, with ingest, production, content management, play out on different screens, and uh, actually we suggested them to integrate a new uh, level of experience for the visitors of the show. And actually we have introduced the IBC TV mobile, which is limited actually at this stage for this year to Golden Pass members, uh, where they have the ability to access live different, uh, different uh, sequences of the conferences, but also VOD clips that are recorded on EVS servers straight into their mobile. So this is the type of implementation. So we have done that uh, with EVS Ccast plugged into the existing infrastructure, plus with the collaboration of Streambolico, the specialist in Wi-Fi multicasting distribution. So again, this technology is, if you don't have the chance, or if you are not Golden Pass member, you can come to EVS booth and we'll show you how this uh, technology is actually working. So the last bit, bit of this presentation is actually related to IP, and I think this is one of the big uh, trends of this show, and, and we wanted to touch base this point with uh, what is EVS approach with regards to IP. And we know live is like of the, the last level of implementation of this technology, uh, but we have to do it right. Uh, we're talking about live, we're talking about reliability, and EVS wants to address this message and explain uh, you what is our strategy for that. I'm really happy to have with us uh, Johan Wungs. Johan Wungs is uh, the SVP uh, Innovation and Technology at EVS, who will give you a good insight of what is exactly the strategic approach that we're bringing at the show. Okay, uh, thanks for being here. Maybe start with uh, something that will probably not surprise you, but we are talking about IP now. Well, IP is not new in broadcast. IP has been there for many years. Actually, I would say in every broadcast center, that uh, EVS has uh, deployed, IP was there. We used IP for, obviously, file-based workflows. We used IP for browsing, remote browsing, giving remote access uh, by users. We used IP to distribute uh, metadata. So it's not new. Um, but what's fundamental to IP is we want to use IP as an enabler, not as something for the sake of uh, technology. And that's something that we have always done. EVS always used IP to bring more value to our customers, to bring more value to the productions that our customers uh, make. And I will illustrate that by three examples. First, we use IP to enrich the live content. By using IP, as for instance the way we did that at uh, the World uh, Cup in Brazil, we allowed by the use of IP that creative designers at the broadcast center had seamless, instantaneously access to all the recordings that were made in the 12 venues. 
and it allowed these designers to make more highlights, to make more compelling highlights, and especially to make them faster. Second example of how we use IP to the benefit of our customers is we use IP to manage and control, to give access to content over distance. The best example is our Divi product, it already has been mentioned before. Last year's IBC, we showed remote production between Amsterdam and uh, Frankfurt. This year, thanks to Gearhaus, we show 4K remote uh, production. We also use, thirdly, IP to give more value to our customers, to reach out to more audiences, to increase the revenue and the return on investment of our customers. And the Seacast example is just doing that. Thanks to Seacast, we can reach out to more people, bring the real content, the value of the content, to more people. What we're talking about now actually is what I would call the last frontier. So IP has been used, now it's about real, the core of life uh, production, this last frontier that we're conquering right now. Every, the whole industry is doing that, especially EVS. For that purpose, we actually we launched our initiative, IP for Life. IP for Life is a strategic program where we really aim at leading this transition and guiding our customers through this transition. Again, not for the sake of just introducing IP for technology purposes, but doing it in a smart way, bringing cost benefits, bringing flexibility benefits, bringing added value to our customers. We have a few real fundamental cornerstones in our IP for Life approach. The first one is that IP solutions, in order to be successful, need to be based on standards and openness. Only by adopting openness and standards, we believe we can really benefit from IP. Secondly, we believe that there will not be a big bang transition to IP. IP will come in a gradual way. So, through this program, we are preparing for that and preparing for hybrid solutions smooth transitions. And as we will demonstrate uh, at the boot, uh, at the RVS boot below, we built this IP infrastructure not on proprietary or dedicated uh, equipment, but we want to use as much as possible God's equipment for the network because that is the way to benefit most of the larger industry. And then having an SDN control layer on top of that for managing effort. Just quickly, going over the advantages uh, of IP, I will not spend a lot of time on that because I can imagine that every possible vendor sort of brings the same message, but still, um, there are cost advantages to IP. You can tap into a larger ecosystem and that really brings advantages. One clear advantage that just shows the benefit of a larger industry that hence has more money, more engineers, uh, more brain power, is the speed of networks. The speed of IP networks simply evolves faster than the bandwidth uh, evolutions of uh, SDI. IP, just by the nature of IP, is also much more flexible. You can transport every piece of information over IP as long as you can put it in uh, an Ethernet packet. And that gives enormous advantages, but also allow to put more things simultaneously over the same wire, giving enormous synergy advantages because one in the same infrastructure can be used for multiple workflows, even workflows not necessarily related to the pure heart of the broadcast itself. And in some cases, going to IP will be a bare necessity. Examples include that if you go to really complex productions, if you go to 4K, the bandwidth requirements, the number of feature streams that you have, simply might become too excessive for a cost-effective implementation in a traditional SDI-based uh, environment. I already emphasized openness, interoperability is key for us, is a key element of the IP for Life uh, program. The reason for that is rather simple. It is thanks to this openness that we will really be able to benefit from the scale advantages of the larger IP-based industry. And that in contrast to proprietary solutions. 
a second advantage, maybe not so much for uh, the technology providers, but definitely for our customers, is that if you achieve really this interoperability, this openness that uh, IP can bring, it allows customers to really select best of breed uh, equipment and combine this best of breed uh, equipment into <coughs> a complete end-to-end -end solution that mostly suits you as a specific customer's uh, your needs. We actually show this interoperability. Just one example that we have at our booth, uh, TVS booth. We, are, we show interoperability with Imagine Communications, where we show how, using the SIMT 2022 standard, we just seamlessly, out of the box, work together, Imagine Communications equipment, EVS equipment. But that's not the only uh, interaction that we have, or integration that we have with uh, Imagine uh, Communication. We also have, together with Imagine, used the Imagine Communication JPEG 2000 uh, compression to use IP and to use uh, networks to, to have video transfer over network bandwidth constraints networks. So let's say a one gigabit uh, per second pipe, thanks to that compression, we can reliably and within a reasonable time constraint transfer video over it. But compression is not only needed in bandwidth constraints networks. There are many other reasons why you need uh, compression in live production. One is a pretty straightforward reason, just if you want to put more video over the same single wire. If you compress, you will achieve it. Another reason is again the bare necessity when we go to 4K. 4K requires 12 gigabit per second. Obviously, you need to compress that signal if you want to transport 4K video signal over a 10 gigabit per second pipe. But live production has specific requirements. First of all, the quality of uh, the video is crucial. For that, we want to go to look for a codec that belongs to the so-called visually lossless class. A second requirement for really live production is the need for low latency. We want to be as close as possible to the real action amongst others for real, let's say, real life uh, switching. For that, we need low latency codecs. Obviously, we want a codec with a low complexity that's easily implementable. The reason is straightforward. The easier you can implement it, the higher density you can achieve, the more channels you can handle within the same equipment. But that are technical requirements. Another requirement is actually of a not technical <coughs> nature. We emphasize openness and for compression it's the same. We want to have codecs that are readily available. We want to have codecs that are sufficiently standardized because that's the only way how the in we as an industry we can guarantee that if you take equipment from let's say EVS that uh, uses some compression scheme and you take equipment of another vendor that it will work together if you try to glue them together. We find that uh, the TICO codec is one of the codecs that really meets that, uh, those criteria. And for that reason, when I mean, we announced uh, uh, around the IBC, for that reason, EVS joined the TICO alliance. Another really key target of the EVS IP for Life uh, program is that we want to show that IP really works for live production. We have several demonstrations, and I will now start highlighting the first one, which is a demonstration that we do together with Cisco. Together with Cisco, we show that remote production is possible over standard off-the-shelf switches in combination with SDN network control. And that, of course, in high, with high quality measures and with the required low latency for live uh, production. We demonstrate that at our boot, and how we do that is actually we have the two boots, Cisco boot and the EVS boot, that we assume to be, let's say, two distant sites, venue and production center. There is a fiber between the Cisco boot and the EVS boot. There are two Cisco switches that connect uh, the fiber, and we transfer video in a reliable way, in a low latency way, over these two switches. Even more, it's not just transferring video. 
we actually merge different workflows over one and the same pipe, over one and the same MP <coughs> network. The first workflow is a standard SIMD 2022 based uh, workflow. So coming from the Cisco boot, we transfer 2022 video traffic to the EVS boot. That SIMD 2022 traffic is then managed by our new XIP gateway that transfers the signals into our XT3 server. A second workflow, <coughs> completely in parallel over the same network, is our DV switching uh, setup. DV has been explained, but it's the same. We have a DV at uh, the Cisco boot, we have a DV at the EVS boot, and video is transferred over the same network, and it's transferred in an optimized way, meaning that we only transfer actually those signals that you actually need. SDN is used to guarantee that all these high priority, high important video flows have the right priority, have guaranteed bandwidth. We use SDN for that. And to prove that, we just flood the network with other traffic. In this case, it's FTP traffic that's used as, say, a file transfer uh, based workflow. And you will see that the SDN approach instantaneously guarantees the right bandwidth for the video flows and the FTP traffic takes whatever is left. An important characteristic of this demo with uh, Cisco is also that it's a combination, it's a hybrid setup. We have IP-based equipment, we have SDI-based equipment as the XT3 server. And that hybrid approach is something that we will see more often in <coughs> coming years. Because the introduction of IP will not be just a sudden big bang, but one morning everybody wakes up and the whole studio, the whole truck, everything is suddenly <coughs> IP only. We need to foresee a gradual migration because it's crucial for our customers that we protect the investments they made. So for quite some time, we will ensure that hybrid solutions work, SDI-based equipment, IP-based equipment, and we will guide our customers to migrate to IP in the right way while still protecting their investments. And our XIP gateway is just about doing that, ensuring that traditional SDI equipment can still be used in the IP-based environment. So IP has a lot of benefits, but in the end, customers, broadcasters will only migrate when they are ready. There are many, many different customers, all broadcasters, will move to IP at a different pace, with different intermediate steps and so on, depending on specific business needs, um, financial capabilities, the kind of productions uh, they want to make, investments that already have been done. And through our IP for Life program, EVS will help those customers, we will guide the customers and make sure that the equipment that we propose is sufficiently future-proof and it will really help guiding our customers through this uh, transition period. In this transition, we should not forget the human factor because it's quote-unquote for taking easy to introduce uh, new technology. We need to ensure that the people that really work on the floor, I mean the creative people that make the real productions happen, that they are up to the new technology. And for that we apply two basic principles. One, we must ensure that the operator facing workflows do not fundamentally change. And that's what we show uh, with the, the demos that we have at our boot, that an operator who is used to work with uh, our LSM environment, he or she will use the LSM and will not notice the difference whether the underlying network is SDI based, or whether the underlying network is IP based, or whether the underlying, underlying network is a combination of both. And that's crucial to help in the adoption of uh, IP. Secondly, for the technical staff, it's important that broadcast uh, engineers know to learn IP. Just as it's crucial that IP, IT based engineers learn the realities of uh, the broadcast world. And those two really need to be brought together to together build an optimized, a broadcast optimized solution built on IP. And again, at EVS, this is what uh, we are doing, trying to bridge these two worlds to make for our customers to come up the best solution and the best 
path towards that uh, solution. It's one of the last uh, slides, but not the least important one. EVS is part of the VRT Live IP uh, initiative, which some of you will already know. It's a multi-vendor initiative started by the VR team, which aims at designing, building, and actually using a full IP-based studio at the premises of the VR team uh, in Brussels. This studio has been uh, built, or the first version has been uh, built. Actually, first clips already have been produced in that studio, and in the coming months, more productions will be done and more complex productions will, uh, will be done. And at the EBU boot, there will be a subset of that studio will be shown at the EBU boot. The main message of that uh, exercise is that, yes, it is possible with IP to have a fully IP-based studio capable of making high demanding productions. An important aspect of that initiative is, again, the openness. The complete setup at uh, the Live IP uh, studio is based on standards. 2022, AS67 for the audio, PTP, and that brings an extreme advantage because it brings new levels of interoperability. And if I can quote uh, Dr. Hoffman of the EBU, he really believes that due to these standards, this brings the interoperability to the next level. And this is actually also what we EVS believe, that IP has a, only will work in case there is this high level of interoperability, allowing our customers to select best of breed components into a solution that most suits uh, their needs. Just to recap, I invite all of you to come and see these uh, demos. Obviously, we have demonstrations at uh, our own booth. Um, there is the studio at uh, the EBU booth. Uh, we have at Cisco and Imagine Communications um, equally demonstrations of our IP for Life uh, program. So thank you very much, Johan. So I think it was very interesting. So as he explained, so all these demos are also uh, effectively available at the EVS booth. So we're in all eight uh, B90. So I know that we already have some briefings with uh, some of you. So we'll have the chance maybe to dig into some of the topics that you might be interested about. So I I would like effectively also to remind that uh, the the demo of uh, the, the 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 live 4K remote production uh, at the Giros booth is in all ten B39. If I'm not wrong, yes. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested about some of the other topics, so we have some literature available about, namely, about the, uh, the IP uh, for Life uh, program that we're introducing. And uh, now I just have to tell you, have a good show. Thank you very much.